Hey guys, welcome back to the USA to Philippines Life channel where today the current view, New York City skyline, very hazy, very smoky. Today we're going to be talking about President Duterte says any further lockdowns aren't good for the Philippines, COVID lockdowns. Let's uh let's digest this uh, article from Reuter. Stick around. Hey guys, all right, welcome back to the USA to Philippines live channel. Uh, just a couple of things that I felt were uh, noteworthy to make a short video tonight. Um, were, and first of all, just want to apologize as you saw in the uh, intro, it's very hazy, very warm here today in the uh, New York area. Uh, we were up in the uh, low to mid 90s. Uh, as you might hear the air con. If you do, I apologize for that. It's uh, it's pretty. Uh, that's why I'm in a different spot today, uh, enjoying some uh, cool air. So hopefully uh, it won't be too loud and distracting uh, from this brief video. So as I said in the uh, opening, uh, an article caught my eye. Uh, President Duterte, I guess, gave his final address uh, of his presidency. Apparently. Uh, there will be a election next year in the Philippines. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so uh, President Duterte on uh, said on Monday that prolonged COVID-19 lockdowns would inflict great damage on the economy. And he urged Filipinos to get vaccinated to help achieve herd immunity. He continued, we cannot afford any more lockdowns lest our economy bleeds to the point of reversible damage. Um, again, these are comments that he made during his final Senate State of the Nation address before he steps down next year. So I was just curious, um, and first of all, just want to welcome um, some, we got a lot of new subscribers in the last couple of days. We want to welcome you all and thank you for subscribing. On behalf of my wife and myself, we appreciate it. So I know we've got a lot of new new folks in there. Just curious, and I know a lot of people aren't taking the vaccine, and that's cool. You know, everybody has a right to choose uh, by all means. Uh, we are, as I've mentioned before, my wife and I are healthcare workers. We, um, for obvious reasons, we opted to be vaccinated um, very early this year, back in February. Uh, we both received our second uh, dose of Moderna. Um, we've had no uh, crazy side effects um, and uh, we're fine and we're comfortable with our decision. But I'm just curious, um, you know, let me know what country, if you want to feel like commenting on this, uh, let me know what country that you're in. Um, have you been vaccinated? Are you planning to be vaccinated? Um, just curious, um, like a quick show of hands on that. And um, yeah, the other thing, uh, which is a, a positive uh, thing, the um, uh, Philippines, um, as you probably all heard by now, um, first Olympic uh, gold medalist, um, weightlifter, Heidi Lynn Diaz, I hope I said the name right and I didn't butcher it. Uh, Fox News in the U.S. is reporting Philippines' first Olympic gold medalist will receive cash and a new condo. How about that? But congratulations, Philippines, on the gold medal. Um, and congratulations to uh, Ms. Diaz. Um, Philippine officials and companies have pledged to give Diaz about $600,000 in cash and a leading real estate company in the country vowed to give her a residential condominium unit in an upscale district in Manila. So, way to go. So, that was about it. Um, just wanted to jump on and uh, talk about those two uh, things that jumped out at me. I know 
uh, myself um, hearing a lot about the Delta variant here around where we live. Um, I know it's a thing probably just about everywhere right now. Uh, let's just hope it doesn't become too much of a thing and set us back in time because uh, I agree with President Duterte, um, not just for the Philippines, but for the world. You know, we really can't afford um, to go back and uh, into lockdown mode. And I'm going to just say one other thing in passing, and I know a lot of people are uh, anti-vaxxers, and that's cool. Like I said, it's cool, but I'm just going to say one thing. As a hospital worker, okay, hospital workers, healthcare workers, frontline workers are still stressed from COVID. Each time there's a surge, it takes a, a physical and a mental and a psychological toll on the healthcare workers. They can't do it forever. They just can't do it forever. Um, you know, uh, I talk to a lot of folks at work, uh, other healthcare workers that I know from other parts of the, the country. The news when I see um, places um, like Iloilo a few weeks ago was up against the situation where uh, their hospitals uh, were almost maxed out again. Um, so you have to consider, I know, and again, you're anti-vaccine, that's fine. But you have to also consider at some point help the health care safety net is going to break down if this just continues to be just wave after wave after wave after wave. People are going to walk away from their jobs and it's going to be hard to get people to step in, I think. Um, I hope that never happens and I hope that's an extreme case. But it's something that maybe not everybody thinks about. And as a healthcare worker, non medical, I'm a non medical healthcare worker, but I've been in a healthcare environment for a quarter century, um, into my 25th year. Okay. And I've seen almost a couple few almost pandemics materialize SARS, H1N1. Um, and, uh, you know, we in the healthcare community were just always kind of prepared for something like this. Um, and unfortunately, it happened. Um, so we just hope and pray that it ends soon for the, health, for the public, for the healthcare working, worker community, um, for the world's economies. For the travel industry, uh, just it cannot continue. We can't just keep, you know, uh, after Delta, maybe it'll be the Echo variant next, you know, uh, and the Foxtrot variant after that. Who knows? But, you know, it's just something to consider the healthcare worker community. It's not a bottomless. A pit source of human resources to take care of sick people um, and people are stressed and they're still there and they're still ready to help everybody they're doing it but you could see it I could see it in their faces they're tired they're worn out they're stressed everybody's edgy and the public is edgy from going through everything we're all edgy I know people argue with me about this COVID fatigue thing. It's a thing, trust me. Okay, we all have COVID fatigue in one form or another. So on that note, um, just, uh, you know, stay safe. Take care wherever you are in the world. Again, we welcome all the new subscribers. Uh, wasn't This isn't a planned upload. I just wanted to address... Uh, say congratulations to the Philippines on their gold medal. I was real excited to see that. Um, and uh, just to touch on what President Duterte said, um, whether uh, you agree with him or not, I think he's right. The economy uh, the Philippines uh, isn't going to hold up uh, forever with these continued lockdowns. 
Uh, so let's all pray that they end. So um, thanks for uh, taking a few minutes to watch this video. Uh, I do have a bunch of content um, that my wife and I shot over the weekend. I'm going to be editing that and getting that out. This was, uh, again, this was unplanned. Um, but I just wanted to jump on and uh, say thank you. Uh, and welcome to the new subscribers and thank you. Um, we appreciate you. And uh, wherever you are, stay safe. Um, stay well, stay blessed. And uh, we will see you very soon in the next one. So take care. Thank you for watching.